We all waited a long time for Google to release a smartwatch. And now we're going to look back at the first generation Google Pixel Watch and see if it's worth your hard earned money today. It's no secret that the Pixel Watch got off to a rocky start, but now it's had time to settle. It's had a few updates under its belt. It's a good time to step back and reevaluate Google's first attempt at a Pixel branded smartwatch. I can't tell you how excited I was when this finally got announced. If you're a Pixel super fan like myself and looking for a Pixel channel to subscribe to, then hit that subscribe button. You're in good company here. The first thing I want to talk about is Wear OS and Fitbit. It was cool to see exactly how Google was going to incorporate Fitbit into the Pixel Watch. And for those that don't know, Google bought Fitbit and that's why they're trying to do that. Now, a lot of people didn't like how they did this. They felt like there was a Google part of the watch and a Fitbit part of the watch. But I didn't really find that at all. But I do have to say before this, I'd never used anything Fitbit and this was the first Pixel Watch. So I didn't really know what to expect, but I thought it worked pretty well and I have a feeling that the people that didn't like how it worked with the Google and Fitbit side of things might have been a little bit mad about something else. And it was that Fitbit Premium was needed to get the full access to all the fitness features of this watch. An extra paid subscription on top of what you'd already paid for the watch. I can get by with the basic fitness tracking on offer with this watch and so can most other people. But in reality, you shouldn't have to. Maybe going a bit too far to want them to match what Apple do for a first gen product. But it would be interesting to know just how many people kept that Fitbit Premium membership going after the free trial ended. I can't imagine it's a lot. For the Google side of things with this watch, I don't know why I was surprised, but it's really good and easy to get around. After your first day of using the watch, you'll find it really comfortable and understand how to get around it. That shouldn't really be surprising because Wear OS wasn't new, just the watch was new. Speaking of Wear OS, it looks really good on the Pixel Watch. As most of the UI has a black background, so it looks like the watch faces just fall over the edge. In recent updates, we did get workout detection and the Pixel 2 watch faces, which I was really impressed with. When going for a walk, I found that workout detection kicked in after about 10 minutes, which is on par with other fitness trackers I've tried. But I am really happy we got these extra watch faces. I was on threads recently and did get some suggestions for watch faces worth checking out, so check that out. But I think I'm settling on this one. I just want to say right off the bat, I love the design of this thing. A lot of people described it as looking like a pebble, but it's so shiny and perfectly circular. And the way the glass just falls over the side, I describe it as more of a water droplet. It does have a metal crown on it, which you can spin to get your notifications or quick settings. If you press it in, you get access to the apps and as you scroll, you get like a haptic feedback, which is really nice. There is a button tucked around the back, which I keep forgetting about, which is to launch your most recent apps. And if you hold it down, you can get Google Assistant. The official size for this watch is 41 millimeters, but it's not all as it seems and more on that later. It is an OLED display, which is why we have those really deep blacks, but more on that later as well. There's a lot of things about this screen which have like a caveat to them. The display goes up to a thousand nits, which is great for viewing outside, but nothing groundbreaking. The body is made of stainless steel and it comes in three colors. Polished silver is the one that I've got here and it's held up really well. You can also get matte black or champagne gold. This was the toughest decision that I came to when picking out a watch because I really wanted the matte black one but the scratches just show up so bad on black tech though. That's why I settled with the stainless steel one. The Google Pixel watch is water resistant up to 50 meters. Personally, I've never been deeper than two meters with this watch, but that's fine for me. It's still working great. And if I am ever 50 meters underwater, there's a good chance I'm already dead and not really worried about my watch. Underneath, we have all these sensors and those are for measuring your heart rate, your ECG and your blood oxygen levels. The one I use the most is a heart rate sensor when I'm working out, but it is always running in the background. So you can go back and check your historical data if you're into that kind of thing. Personally, outside of working out, it never gets checked. If you're thinking of picking up the Google Pixel Watch first gen, then you probably won't have seen this strap mechanism before. It's pretty easy to use, you just press down this section with the strap and then slide the strap across. First time it feels a bit fiddly but you get used to it pretty quick. There are a few watch bands for this watch, I'll talk about that a bit more a bit later because I have thoughts. You might notice that a lot of the backgrounds are very dark and there is a good reason for that or a clever reason for that. Even though this is a 41mm watch which is on the small side anyway, that is a bit misleading. The usable screen area is actually around 30 millimeters. Now that wasn't the deal breaker I initially thought it was going to be. Although the screen is tiny, none of the information actually seemed squashed in there and I could read it all really clearly. And you only really notice the bezels when you're putting like a light background on or setting a photo as your background, that really tends to show them off. So I will say the battery life on this thing is so much better than when I first got it. Saying that it's still not quite as good as I want it to be. On my first day testing this just flat out 
workout didn't get me through the day. I have the always on display turned on and I'm at least recording one workout a day whether it's a walk or a run. So I never really expected to get the full up to 24 hours that Google quotes. But I did expect to get from 7am till say 10-11pm when I go to bed. That first day testing though must have just been a one-off because it has been much better since then. And get me to the end of the day with about 30% left. Considering it takes around 2 hours to fully charge, you could just take this off and charge it up for an hour after work and then put it back on for sleep tracking overnight and then top up the charge again in the morning when you're actually getting ready for work. But that seems like a lot of hassle, so I just haven't been using sleep tracking. While I'm recharging my batteries, the phone's recharging its batteries. I did want to spend a bit of time talking about these watch straps. One big problem you're going to have with this watch, as an Android person, you probably like to customise your phone. And it's just something that you're not going to have a lot of options with, with the Pixel Watch. This is something you expect to happen with a first gen product, so keep that in mind. But there aren't many accessory makers that are making pixel watch first gen straps personally i stick to first party accessories if you can because you can feel a lot more confident that they'll actually fit correctly if you know of any good third party straps for this then put the name of them down in the comments because i am looking for one for myself we did see more accessory makers getting involved with the pixel watch 2 but to be honest it was still slim pickings hopefully we get a lot more with the pixel watch 3 line where there's rumored to be two sizes being released surprisingly you can still get the google pixel watch first gen directly from the google store it's 200 £179 which I 100% would not recommend getting. But this watch does start to look like a bit of a deal when you check out the second hand market. You can regularly find these for less than £100. I've been checking on cash converters and CEX, places where you can get a 12 month warranty included in with them. You can get the watch as cheap as £50 if you're willing to go onto Facebook Marketplace and deal with that mess. This watch wasn't without controversy and it comes in the form of the domed glass. Now I haven't had the problem with this watch but it should be pretty easy to spot when you're looking for a watch for yourself. The adhesive holding down the glass was coming unstuck and in some cases actually coming out of the side of the metal as well. So before you pick one of these up just give it a bit of an inspection. Go around where the glass meets the metal and make sure that there's no like black adhesive coming out. It sounds like I've been a bit harsh on the Pixel watch but that's just because I really want it to become a great product and I do think if you can get this watch for less than a hundred pound you're going to be really happy with it. I've loved this last week repping the Pixel Watch. For me, this is probably more than I'll ever need as I'm using it as basically a glorified fitness tracker, but it has been nice having a few of those extra features. Being such a big Pixel fan myself, I don't think there's going to be another Android smartwatch I'd like to use alongside my Pixel. The sleek design is enough to keep me happy, and you know what? I think I'm going to be sticking with this watch for the foreseeable future. Hopefully we see some meaningful upgrades with the Pixel Watch 3 line. Those bezels have got to get smaller and we definitely need a bigger battery life. I've been using my Pixel watch alongside the pixel 6 and if you want to see my review of that it's on screen now i'll see you over there